Revelation chapter 22 Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer would there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true, and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants which must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon, and blessed is the one who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. He said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoers still do evil. Let the filthy still be filthy. Let the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to see the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and the murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, let the one who hears say, Come, let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to chapter 22 of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. We have finally finished the book. We've gone through each chapter of the book of Revelation. And I know we haven't gone through all the speculatory things, which I know people enjoy talking about. But I wanted us to walk through this as a book that applies to our life today, and how many in the ancient world, when this was written, would have received it. So we are at the end of all things. The new heaven and new earth has been created. The old earth is gone. Now we're in the new Jerusalem. And it gives us one last descriptor of what life in the new Jerusalem will be. And it starts with showing that there's the river of life. It is pure. It's bright. It comes from the throne of God and from the Lamb. Into the middle of the street, which is the other side of the river, is the tree of life. Going all the way back to the book of Genesis. So the idea is life is continually flowing from God and from Jesus. It's perfect. It's clear. It is unlike the world we had here that was muddied and filled with sin. No, the sin is gone. And we can freely eat of the tree of life because we have the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life from the beginning. But we weren't allowed to eat of the tree of life when sin happened. Now that sin is gone, we are free to live forever with God. And it says his tree, the, this tree leaves will be the healing of the nations. Now whatever was broken before, maybe uh, fractured rifts uh, amongst people groups or uh, the divisions, we will all find our life and our healing knowing we are one under Christ. 
No longer will anything be cursed. There will be nothing, uh, a, a, a curse will, will ever happen again. Nothing profane. We will never have to worry about sending our way out of this kingdom. We are sealed forever. The only thing in it will be God and the things that are of God. And his servants who will worship him. And we will see his face. Folks, I don't know if you realize how big a deal this really is. One of the scriptures previously says that no one has ever seen God. Right? Moses gets to see a glimpse of God. With the seraphim or in the throne room. With six angels or with six wings covering them, right? Two to fly with, two to cover their feet, two to cover their face. They've been in God's throne and have never seen him. But they know he's there. But all of his servants will get to see God and his as entirety as we can understand and see him at this point. But it says something very important. His name will be on our foreheads. I think that means several things. Number one, going back to the ceiling earlier in the book of Revelation. All of us will be his and he will be ours. Right? I will be their God and they will be my people. But remember, Jesus has something put on him in the last chapter that only he knows. Only he knows his name. And that name will be put on our foreheads. That either we have a unique relationship with Jesus, that we may understand it, or I like to think because it's on our forehead. At this moment, we will know the full name of Jesus. What does that mean? When God shows who he is to Moses... He says, who should I say sent me? God says, I am that I am. I am. All the glory, all of the goodness, all the amazing things. I, I am. There is no box to contain me. There's nothing in which you can understand me. I am that I am. I'm categorically different than anything you could even perceive of, Moses. You can't understand my name because it is far too great and wondrous for you. When the new heaven and the new earth will know his name and will see it on everyone who believes in him, will finally begin to understand who God really is. And night will be gone. There will be no need for a lamp because God will light it all. Why will there not be any night? Well, we won't have to sleep. There won't have to be any reasons for that kind of rest. We will rest in the presence of God forever and ever. We will never feel tired again. We'll never feel worried again. No more anxiety. No more of the weights. Am I gonna be able to pay for this? Am I gonna afford this? How's my health? None of those things will ever be on us again. We will live in that perpetual rest as God started on day seven. We won't have to live with dread or wonder anymore. We will be in a state of perfect contentment. Oh, how I long for that. Could you imagine just for a moment being on the run for your faith and having your property stolen, everyone around you? You are only living in a state of terror. You're only living in a state of need and stress and worry. Many people were working till the to the ends just to make sure that they can make their life. The end. Of, uh, they were working full days just to make sure they could get enough crumbs to feed their families because they're on the run or their property is taken. Can you imagine the hope it gives? I bet you can, because for many of us, we have the same hope. We toil all this time, always wondering if we're going to have enough money, if we're going to have enough, enough, enough. Now we'll be at rest. And Jesus says a term that he said many times over this book. These words are trustworthy and true. It says, the God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angels to show his servant what must take place. God has shown this to John so that John can relay this to God's people. And he's coming soon. And it says, Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. That means two things. Number one, that coming soon, I think, is a real thing. Y'all know where I stand. I'm not even going to talk about it today. But the end of our lives is but a blip. 
regardless if we're talking about Jesus coming back or not. He's coming for me soon, either way. My life is a vapor. It's just a brief dust in the wind. What is this short life to the eternity with God? He was coming. And he says, keep the words of this prophecy. That also means it's possible to keep the words of the prophecy. It is, pro it is possible for first century Christians, for you and I to do what was tasked of the church in this book, which was to persevere, to not forget our first love, to go all the way through, to withstand calamity and stand up with our heads held out saying, I know whose I am, without bowing the knee to the things of this world. The church is charged with continually pressing forward when the beast comes, pressing forward when the prophet comes, pressing forward when the dragon comes. The book of Revelation was the rally cry to the church saying Jesus won at the cross. Don't worry about what the world tries to strip from you. Will he not provide? Will he not bring his people through to the end? Will it be hard? Will some of us die? Will some of us lose our lives for our faith? Yes, but if we do, God is keeping count. Not one of them is lost. Not one sacrifice is minuscule. Every time we preach, every time we share, the book of Revelation shows the eternal reverberations it has for people who would not listen. We can keep the words of the prophecy of this book. He says, I am John, who has heard and seen these things. And I heard and saw them. I worship the angel again. It was just too wonderful for him. Every time he begins to worship this angel, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. No! I'm but a messenger just like you, you and your brothers, the prophets, and those who will keep the words of this book, worship God. Now, when it says book, that's not applying to the whole Bible. Of course you could. It's saying if you will keep the words of this book, just worship God. That's the most succinct way of wording this. The book of Revelation gives us all of the awe and wonder to worship God. Do not seal up the words, for the time is near. Let the evil doer do evil, and let the righteous do what is righteous. Let the filthy be filthy, let the holy be holy. In other words, if this book is not enough to deter someone, I don't know what is. If this book's not enough to spur you on to continue in your faith, I don't know what else will. Right? So we're going to share this book with people. But not like the world today shares it about the doom and the gloom and the prognostications and all the Sue saying, oh, what about this and what about that? Trying to figure out these times. I think you've missed what this book has given us and the power it's given us when you look at the speculation instead of doing what it's called the church to do from beginning to end. Because Jesus will bring recompense with him. He will repay each one of us for what we have done. The holy, holiness. The unholy, unholiness. That doesn't mean we lose our salvation. That does mean our life echoes into eternity. We will all be judged fairly at the beam of seat. Some of us, it will be our sin recounted and we will pay its cost. Those are those who are lost. The goats. Then you have the sheep. Our lives will be put and counted as valuable. And he will say, what did you do with what I gave you? There will be no more condemnation, but we will still have a life that matters because he's beginning the end, the first and the last, the alpha, the omega. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may be right in the tree of life and they may enter the city gates. That means those who are covered with the blood of the lamb whose robes are washed. Outsides are everyone else, the, the immoral, the adulterers, the murderers. Those who love and practice falsehood. In other words, our transformation shows who we are. I must be transformed into the image of God. No, we're not perfect. But I can't say I know God and not live differently. He says, I sent my angel to testify this to who? To the churches. 
Now we could say the seven churches in the beginning, but I think really the point is this is for the people of God to know that he's the root, the descendant of David, the bright morning star. Remember, the devil calls himself the son of the morning. He says, no, 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 no. How dare you try to take my title? I am the first light. I am the light that brings others to, to the future. Not you, devil. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. In other words, God is saying, use this book to help others come. Help use this book to spur you on to preach the gospel if you've never done it. To share your faith if you've never done it. And then it says, the ones who are thirsty, let them come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. In other words, don't charge people for this. Don't put indulgences. Those who are thirsty, give them something to drink. That's how you know when they're ready for the gospel. We, we can preach the gospel to everybody, but not everyone's hearts are ready. Not everyone has God condescended to their hearts yet. And maybe he has, and maybe they're in a spirit of rebellion. But there are some whose hearts are in good soil. So let them come in. Then there's a warning. It says, I want everyone who hears the prophecy of this book. If anyone asks to them, I will add him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from this book of prophecy... God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. Folks, that is horrifying. And yes, that does apply just to Revelation, not the rest of the Bible. Remember, all of these books were separate books. Bible, bibliography, right? It's the idea that it's a composition of many books. But says, if you want to tamper with this book, God's going to tamper with you. Period. He who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, even so, Lord Jesus, come. That's what that word means, Maranatha. Let the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. I have found such encouragement in this book. I have found such peace in knowing the God we serve. That he is just, that he is holy, that he protects the righteousness of his people, that he doesn't let us come to harm from him, that he can protect us during when there's times of judgment, that yes, people will die for their faith. And so again, this is making an easy life. It just means it's a life not left alone. And it's a life that is always meaningful and never meaningless. This book shows us how meaningful each and every life is, be they believer or unbeliever. God takes how we live very, very seriously. So let us complete the mission. Let us conquer, as the book calls us to. I want to thank you all for joining us through this series. I hope it's been rewarding. It's been such a blessing to walk through with each and every one of you. May God richly bless you. If you have any questions, reach out to staff at newday416.church. If you need information, go to newday416.church. We love you all. Have a blessed and wonderful week. And we'll see you on Sunday.